what's up guys today we're going to go over how to do a sublimation license plate so let's get into it okay in this video i'll be going over how i like to design press and ship my sublimation license plates the license plates are super easy to do and can earn you a pretty good return on your investment they're six inches by 12 inches which means they're narrow enough to be printed on any standard or large format printer they're flat so they can be pressed with the 15 inch by 15 inch heat press and they're forgiving. License plates are usually viewed from six feet or further, so it'll be hard to notice any imperfections at that distance that you might otherwise notice up close. Now, for this video, we're gonna be using the XP15000, the WF2860, and one of my favorite printers, the WFC5210. All of these printers are gonna be using Dynamite Gorilla Sublimation Ink and A-Sub120G sublimation paper. And we use the eight and a half by 14 inch size so that we can get the entire image on the substrate and not have to try and piece two smaller eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper together. Also the A-Sub 120G paper seems to work the best for me on aluminum substrates. I found that using other paper, especially the A-Sub 125G, it'll leave these white splotches all over the aluminum. Now also all of these printers are going to be running chipless firmware from inkchip.net. So head over there for your chipless firmware and your WIC reset needs. And also make sure you use the coupon code GORILLA for an extra 10% off at checkout. So now that we have everything that we need, let's head to the computer and get started with the design. Alright, so when it comes to the design, I work in Photoshop, so I'm going to be using a PSD file. Now I made this as uh, simple as I could for you guys, so uh, what you want to do is just go to your browser. You can go to dynamitegorilla.com. We can click on the file share tab up here at the top. And in that file share tab, there's gonna be a license plate template folder. Go ahead and click on that. And there's gonna be two files here. One's gonna be the Dynamite Gorilla license plate blank template. And the other one's gonna be the preview. So we're gonna go ahead and download both of these. And save that to my desktop here download both of these all right so we got the preview and the template here now I'm also gonna download a background to work with let's see let's go with a sunset uh, let's try that there we go this one right here will work just fine uh, let's right click save image as and we're going to save this to the desktop as well all right so here are three files that we just downloaded again i work in photoshop so i'm going to open up the uh the uh the template here all right and in this template it's basically just two layers um, one's a background layer. The other one is this white plate box layer here. And that's if you're working with light colored uh, license plates or I'm sorry, light colored designs or white designs. And when you go to put it on the substrate, it's going to be hard to center it up. So this box is going to put just a really light line all the way on the edge of the bleed. Um, a little box so that when you put your license plate in there, you can center it up on your design better without getting that black line on your license plate. Um, let me give you the dimensions of this template here, just in case you want to create it from scratch. It's 12.107 on the width, 6.083 on the, on the height, and 300 pixels per inch for the resolution. All right, so now let's go ahead and open up our file, that other file that we downloaded, this tropical uh, sunset deal here. All right, so uh, now the trick is, say if this is the image that you want to use for your license plate, the, the the trick now is to get it from here to our blank template here. So in order to do that, we just need to go ahead and uh, copy this. So we're going to select all. And I'm going to go at a pace that everybody can, can follow along with. So I'm not going to use a lot of shortcuts here. So uh, select all or control A. And then over here uh, from edit, we're going to copy it to the clipboard at this point. So we're going to uh, copy or control C. And then we're going to go back to our uh, template here and just paste it in here. So we can just edit and paste. And once we do that, we really don't need this one anymore. So let's go ahead and clear that out. All 
All right, so um, as you can see, it's smaller than the actual template here. So let's go ahead and resize this by using the move tool. So we're gonna click on this uh, arrow up here. It's gonna give us these anchor points. If you don't see the anchor points of your transform controls, just go up here to this, um, this check mark here and check on it and then you'll have your controls here. So what I like to do is I like to hold down the Alt key and move this, this anchor point and then basically it's gonna move all sides of it. So we're gonna move that all the way here and now we have it filled up to the entire um, template here. Now you can actually make this bigger and it won't go outside of the margins of the template. So I can stretch this all the way out and it won't get any bigger than the six by 12. So I'm gonna just go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. I'll move this over so that the sun is closer to the center here. All right. And then I might scrunch this down just to taste. Bring this to the left just a little bit here. All right. So we can click on this check mark up here at the top to confirm that. Again, if you're using Affinity Photo or Affinity Designer or something like that, that uses that can uh, manipulate the PSD files, whatever controls do what I'm doing, I've never really worked with it. I, the only time I've worked with Affinity Designer is to is to print out an image. I've never really manipulated it in the in the program, but I know you can print using this uh, PSD file. So now that we got this the way we want it, we can open up our preview document. So we're gonna open document, open up that preview file that we downloaded. And what this is, is like the uh, name of the file says, it's just a preview. We're gonna take what's here and put it here. And it's gonna give us what the actual design is gonna look like on the substrate. So in order to do that, we need to, again, uh, select all. So we're gonna select all and then, uh, go over here to edit to copy it but this time since we're working with multiple layers over here we're going to do copy merged so that's going to do all the uh, visible layers here so we're going to copy merged and then when you go back to your preview um, you're just going to use your magic wand tool again affinity i do not know what this step is so we're just going to click here click anywhere in the white area to select the white area and then we're going to paste it. But this time we're gonna paste into because we're pasting into this white area that we just selected. So we're gonna hit edit, paste special, and paste into. And once you paste into it, it's gonna be, the, the first thing you'll notice is that the design is way bigger than the preview. And that's fine. This time we're just gonna resize it again, but instead of going up, we're gonna resize it down. So we're gonna click on this move tool again and we're gonna take our anchor from the top left. I'm holding down the Alt key and I'm just gonna move that anchor from the top left all the way down to the bottom right corner where these two guidelines, these two blue guidelines intersect. So let me zoom in here so you can see it. So when I drag it down, I drag it to this, to this corner here. And if you don't, go ahead and uh, use your snap view snap make sure it snap and when you get close it'll go ahead and snap that right there to the uh to the guideline so once you got it snapped in you're going to take the design and just drag it up and we're going to use these blue guidelines uh throughout the design and we're going to snap into the uh the guidelines you don't want to try to get it lined up with the corners of the of the uh the rounded corners of the plate you're going to go all the way to those little blue lines that we have guides on so we're going to click there we're going to lock it in there and we're going to lock it in down on this last blue line here once we do that we'll click on the check mark to confirm it and this is basically what your license plate is going to look like now you can't see it because there's a black border around the outside and that's usually if you have like a light colored plate it'll stand out there but if you have a dark color plate like we have here, you can just hide the background layer and then it'll show you um, what the plate looks like with the background removed. So this is what your plate will look like if you want. 
uh, you can just go ahead and uh, go back to your license plate blank and print it out if everything is good to go in your preview. Or if you're doing this uh, for a customer, say we have a fictional customer and uh, she was looking at a plate like this, we could actually save this by hitting file, save as, and we can say um, sunset license plate preview. All right, and this is for our customer here. Then we can go down to format, and we're gonna change it to uh, JPEG, and then we can hit save. I'm gonna click on quality at 12 or whatever uh, you want here. I use 12 because it's the maximum. Um, but now when we go to our uh, desktop, we now have the actual JPEG of the, uh, or a photo of the preview. So if I wanted to, I could take this and send it out as an attachment to a potential customer and say, hey, this is what your license plate is gonna look like before I waste a bunch of paper and or substrates. If you notice, we haven't printed anything yet. So, but this is what it's gonna look like. So if you want to, you can go ahead. If you're happy with that, you can go to Control P and print it out. Let's see, XP 15,000 print settings. All right, so if you wanted to, you could just go ahead and print this out. It'll look something like this. You put it on your template and uh, you're gonna uh, wind up with something like this once it's done uh, pressing. So we sent the preview to the customer. She hates it. So now we are going to add some text to it. So let's go down here and we're gonna add text. She wants uh, the city where she's from on here. So let's go ahead and put that. So she's from Vice City. We'll put that down here on our plate. She wants it at the bottom. So now what we'll do is just go ahead and bring it back to the preview. So we're gonna select all. We're going to copy, merged. And then we're gonna to go to our preview. I'm already on that layer of the, uh, the preview. So I'm just gonna delete that layer and it's gonna take me back to the background. So now I'm just going to repeat those steps. I'm going to go down here to the magic wand tool, select in the white area, select edit, paste special, paste into. I'm going to take our move tool and then we are going to resize it down to this bottom right corner, move it back up to these hash marks, stretch it back out to these guides, click the check mark to confirm it and hide the background and this is what it's going to look like now let me stroke this so you can see it better if you look you can see that the uh words are going through the holes so of course you're going to want to move this up i'm going to take the text we're going to move the text up and then we're going to go back to these steps again file i'm sorry edit I'm sorry, select all, copy, merged, back to your preview, delete that layer. And I'm just hitting the delete key when I delete that layer. Magic wand tool, click inside the white area, uh, paste special, paste into, resize. So we're going to resize this down and now we've moved the text up a little bit so now let's see what it looks like once we preview it remove this background here first click to confirm check to confirm that remove this background and as you can see we've moved the text up above the holes so we're good to go so we resend this out to our customer she hates this design as well so i'm going to go ahead and make something that she'll probably like a little bit better
All right, so the customer design uh, decided on this plate here. So let's go ahead and get a preview together. Again, gonna select all or control uh, A. Then we're gonna go to copy merged. Gonna bring it back to our preview, delete our old design. Selecting this white area, go back to edit, paste special, paste into. We're gonna resize down. And bring it to these guidelines snapped in. All right. And then we're going to remove this background so she can get a clear uh, representation of what the plate's going to look like. So let's go ahead and hide that background layer. Then I'm just going to stroke this by hitting, uh, double clicking it and hitting stroke. And that's going to give this little black outline around the outside. Hit OK here. And we'll go ahead and send this over to her. She loves it, so let's go ahead and print it out. So we're gonna go here, go to File, Print. And we already got it on our XP 15,000. Let's go to our print settings just to make sure. Yep, A sub 120, hit OK. And then we'll go ahead and print this out. Okay, so now that we got our, our our first plate printed out, let's go ahead and start on our second design. Now this one's going to have a white border around it, so we're going to show you that, uh, that white plate box. So let me open that up. Alright, so this is the blue Tennessee uh, plate design that we, uh, that we made. It's close to the original new one that just came out here in February. We're going to uh, get this one together so I can show you the uh, the white plate guide on the outside and show you that box that we can put it in. So let me put this together here. Okay, so we got this plate together here, and the first thing I want to do, well, what I want to do now is put this uh, white white plate box layer, make sure that it's visible. Um, so now that we have that visible, when we go to print it, it's going to show a little itty bitty, it's going to show a really light box on the outside. You can kind of see it here in the preview. Let me take it away so you can see what it doesn't look, see, see if it doesn't. And this is what it looks like without it. So we're going to make sure that we put it on there. All right, so we can go ahead and print this out to our 2860. It's already selected. Let me double check here. All right. All right, so now we'll print this to our 2860. All right, so we got that plate, that design printed out. Let's go ahead and start on this final design. Just gonna be something quick for me. It's gonna be based on the uh, Wakanda flag. So I'm gonna take this and we're going to select all, edit, copy, go back here to the template actually I'm gonna open up a new one let me save this I'm gonna save this as Vice City and then I'm just gonna open up that template again brand new alright so now that we have the new template up we are going to work on this Wakanda alright copy that so again, I keep doing the shortcuts, y'all. I'm so sorry. I'm so used to doing shortcuts. Select all. 
then go back to our uh, preview. I'm sorry, we're gonna go back to our uh, our new uh, blank uh, template here. Let me get rid of this Vice City one. All right, so now we're gonna go back to our blank template and paste our Wakanda flag in here. Now, I don't want to stretch this all the way out. So, uh, because if I do that, it's going to distort the image in the middle. And even though I'm not going to use that image, I just don't want it distorted because I'm going to use that circle for something else. And I want that circle to stay exactly where it is. So what I'm going to do is just go to my background and paint the entire background green. So let me turn to my eyedropper tool. I'm gonna select the green of that flag. And then we're just gonna fill our background in green, like so. All right, and for this red stripe here, what I'm gonna do is just make selections coming out here. And we're gonna make a selection coming here. like so and then I'm gonna take my eyedropper tool again and click in this red area and then we're gonna turn those uh, pieces <coughs> those selections that I made we're gonna fill those in red too so now it's the whole license plate instead of just that little square that we had at the beginning so we'll go ahead and get that out of there and then like so all right all right so we are looking good so let's go ahead and get this printed out to our WFC 5210 that is already there go to our print settings just to make sure Epson vivid all right so let's go ahead and get that printed out Okay, so now that we've got all of our designs completed, let's wait for them to come out of the printer so we can get them ready to press. Okay, in order to get these ready to press, we're just gonna line these up on the design itself with your, um, with your substrate, which is the aluminum plate. We're gonna have that face down onto the substrate here. And you just wanna center it up on the design. And I try to have the equal amount of bleed on, on both sides, top and bottom and the sides. And we're just gonna lock it in place with some tape on the corners. Like so. Now with these, uh, plates you can probably see it better now what I was talking about earlier with these lines uh, with this box around the uh, the design for the white plates and when you see if we can get that in focus here you can see there's a really small line between on the edge of this design here and you're just using that to know uh, where to put your, your plate at. All right, so we'll lock that in too. So 
So we got them locked in. Uh, we'll get the other one together and we'll get them over to the press. Okay, so we're at the press and we are ready to go. So I have my, um, this is just a cheap heat press I have that I only use for uh, aluminum or license plates. Um, it works in Celsius, so I'm at 200 degrees Celsius. Convert it to uh, Fahrenheit to be 392 degrees. So about 385, 390 will work as well. Uh, what I like to do is I like to pre-press first. So I'm going to press this down and just let this run for about 30 to 45 seconds. Okay, so now that we got this, this bottom area right here warmed up, we can go ahead and put our plate down on the uh, on the mat here of the press. Now, I'm sure you've watched videos where they put the plate up like this. I, I don't press my plates that way. I press them uh, with the paper side down and the plate up. Aluminum's a conductor, so the heat's gonna travel through the plate and you'll still get your sub. So I'm gonna put a piece of blowout paper. I don't use butcher paper. I just use a piece of um, just cheap copy paper that's uh, legal, legal size and it fits directly on top of the other paper. So you're not having to cut and get it to fit or roll it out and have a whole bunch of waste. You just put it right down on top of it like that. So once that's done, I'm just gonna go ahead and press this down. It says 66 seconds on here and that's just because I never got this thing calibrated correctly and it runs a little fast. So I had to make it a little bit longer, but that's all right too. Also, when you put it face down, when you put it down like this and press from the, uh, the bottom side, you uh, don't run the risk of burning the plate. If you put it on the top like this, the heat from the top of the plate, the heat comes from the top plate. And when it sits directly on the top of the surface like this, you can accidentally burn your plate. And the burnt plate looks like these really, really, really light spots all over the place. Not like the, the splotches from the A sub 125, these are just like these little itty bitty white splotches all over the plate and it's burnt um, UV protection on the plate and also just over sublimating of the ink as well. So you just want to put it on the, uh, I like to put them down and that way that heat's not directly on the top of the uh, surface where your, uh, your ink is being uh, uh, sublimated onto the plate. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And I'm just going to move that one to the side and right in with the next one. Paper on top. Close it down. All right, so we got all of them pressed out now. And uh, let's go ahead and peel these off and see how they look. All right, so let's go ahead and see our work here. These off. Here is the Dynamite Gorilla Wakanda plate. And this is going to be the blessed plate for Stuart County. All right. All right. Now moving along. Here is our fictional customer's Vice City plate. So, 
that is how you press the license plate. Now, our customer is very excited about her plate, so let's go ahead and show you how I ship these off. Okay, so when I ship these, I like to ship these in 13 by 10 inch mailing bags or 10 by 13 inch mailing bags and some uh, piece of cardboard in it to keep it stiff. So we have a bag and now we need the cardboard. Now I use, I guess these me medium uh, mailing, uh, not mailing boxes, storage boxes from Walmart. And what I do is I just take it and I line it up for 13 inches here. And then we're just gonna cut it down. And of course the blade won't go all the way through so we have to flip it. Line it back up at 13 inches. And then we're gonna cut straight down. So now you're gonna be left with this. So then we're gonna take this and flip it on its side. This little piece off of here. And then we're gonna cut this at nine and a half. Now, when I cut it that first time, it left a little hinge down here at the bottom. I don't know if you can see this. It left a little hinge down here at the bottom. Like so. So this is gonna give us the two sides. All right. So now we're gonna cut at nine and a half. And then we're gonna nine and a half again. And the last one, nine and a half. Now what we did is we took that whole piece and we cut it three times to make three of these right here. And each one of these opens up like so so from here what we do is just take your plate right and then we're gonna put it inside of here for her we're gonna close it down and then I just take uh, a piece of tape, a piece of clear tape, a piece, a piece of clear packing tape, and then we're just going to tape the top, so that's like that, and we're going to do a piece on the sides as well, and that's going to keep, and that's going to keep the license plate from moving around inside of the box, uh, inside the cardboard. So do that. One over here. So now we have this. So we have our plate in here and it's not moving inside of the cardboard. From there, we're just gonna slide it into our 10 by 13 inch mailing bag, a poly mailing bag, it's in there. All right, so now that it's in there, we we'll close it down, and now the uh, carrier won't be uh, tempted to, to bend this up and try to jam it into your, uh, your customer's mailbox. I'll also throw a fragile stickle on there and hopefully they pay, play by the rules. So that's how we ship them off there. All right guys, so that is how we design, press and ship these license plates off here at Dynamite Gorilla. Again, the license plate template and the preview file are free on the website. The only thing I ask is if you make any significant improvements to the design, go ahead and get in contact with us so we can put it out uh, on the website for everyone to download again if you like the video just go ahead and give it a thumbs up consider subscribing it really helps the channel out and until next time guys good luck and good night